Hello all, welcome to the mobile computing class. In this tutorial, we are going to study localization and calling with respect to the GSM network. We already covered the GSM architecture and its functional units. We already seen the mobile station, base station switching center, mobile service switching center, home location register and visitor location register these functional units and its space and its position in the GSM architecture's functional unit block diagram. This diagram I studied from the mobile communication book of John Siller. Our today's agenda is to learn the GSM localization and the call setup procedure. Before moving to this particular topic, I would like to ask you one question. That Suppose John and Johnny, these are the two GSM mobile users and John wants to call Janardhan. When both are from the same country, then what exactly happens is? I'll give you time to think. Please prepare your answers in your brains. Time up. Now, will our answer matches to one of these following options? Option 1. Janardhan mobile starts ringing? Probably. Or it matches Johnny hears nice dialer tone? Bingo. That you experienced so far. Or the call drop happens as due Johnny won't have sufficient balance. Or the option number 4 service provider company is very happy that Johnny at least made a call. Now you can imagine what kind of Johnny is the person. Probably your answers are, answers are right, but it is the human perceptions. In the technical field, we need to answer this particular question with respect to the functional units of the GSM architecture and let's do that. This is what the today's agenda is. We know that one fundamental feature of GSM network is it locates the user automatically and worldwide. The GSM always knows where its user is currently located. Also, the user's mobile number is used and uniquely identifies him worldwide. To locate a mobile station and to address the mobile station, several numbers are required, such as MSISDN, IMSI, TMSI, and MSRN. MSISDN is nothing but mobile station. Subscriber International ISDN number. IMSI number is nothing but International Mobile Subscriber Identity. TMISI number is abbreviation of Temporary Mobile Subscriber Identity. Abbrevi and the MSRN is abbreviation of Mobile Subscriber Roaming Number. Let's visit MSISDN and for what purpose this number is meant for. MSISDN number is nothing but your GSM mobile number. This number is associated with the SIM card. This number can have a two digit of country, three, three digit of country code, two to three digit of national destination code and the remaining digits are used for the subscriber number. The country code is unique for each and every country. The national destination code is nothing but network provider's address and this is also assigned uniquely over the throughout the world in the GSM network. The next number we need to learn that is IMSI number. IMSI number has a three fields. The mobile country code, mobile network code and the mobile subscriber international number. The mobile country code is nothing but these are the three digits are used to locate the country of that particular service provider. The mobile network code is nothing but the, the service provider's address in this particular country. Let's assume IDI is providing its GSM services in Maharashtra. So the IMSI number for IDI subscribers will have the five digits as 40422. It is nothing but 404 is nothing but the country code for GSM network for India and 22 is nothing but the mobile network code for IDEA in Maharashtra. 
Similarly, that the Tata Cellular providing the service in Maharashtra, then their country, their code will be 40407 as 404 is nothing but the country code for India and 07 is nothing but mobile network code. The next number is nothing but PMSI that is Temporary Mobile Subscriber Identity. As its name suggests, this number works the same as IMSI work but to hide IMSI for security reason the TMSI is get assigned by the VLR temporarily. Next number is MSRN number. This is mobile station roaming number. This is also for security reason to hide the location of the dialed subscriber the MSRN number is get used and it is get assigned by the VLR database temporarily. So MSISDN number so I am just summarizing the things MSISDN number is nothing but your mobile number IMSI number is nothing but the number which is used to locate the country and the mobile network operator TMSI number is nothing but to hide the subscribers location we require TMSI number and MSRN number it is get assigned by the VLR database temporarily for security reasons now these numbers are used to locate the mobile station uniquely in the GSM network worldwide. Now how these numbers are used in call established procedure, let's visit that part. We already know this BSC, MSC, HLR, MSC and BSC are nothing but the functional units. Now the subscriber 1 wants to call to subscriber 2. Remember, our subscriber 1 is nothing but Johnny and subscriber 2 is nothing but Janardha and they are from the same country. Let's solve this particular problem. Now, for sake of simplicity, we just uh, rename this MSC for subscriber 1 is MSC1 and MSC for this subscriber 2 is nothing but MSC2. Please take a note of this. Henceforth, this MSC I will pronounce as MSC1 and this MSC I will pronounce as MSC2. Now, when the subscriber 1 dials the MSISDN number of subscriber 2, this MSISDN number then uh, get sent using the signaling information to MSC1. It means that the signaling information is get established whenever there is a uh, call is get dialed by subscriber 1. This red color is nothing but shows that signaling information is get established between mobile switching center 1 and the mobile station. Once the mobile switching center receives the MSISDN number, it performs a pre-analysis in order to find the type of call. As MSISDN number contains the country code and the network operator code, this particular uh, country code tells that subscriber 2 is from same country that's why MSC sends the request to have IMSI number to its HLR so this is nothing but the second routing information is get passed to HLR that is to know the IMSI number of dialed subscriber now from MSISDN number the HLR, HLR answers the IMSI number IMSI number and VLR address number and from this database it communicates to MSC2 to identify its corresponding MSRN number. Now ML, uh, HLR request a roaming number request to MSC2 then MSC2 retrieves MSRN number from the roaming pool for given IMSI number and then after retrieval it will just forward this MSRN number to cross to particularly uh, MSC1 through HLR. So this is what the this is the fourth step. This is the fifth step that the uh, retrieved MSRN number is get passed to HLR and then HLR tells that particular MSRN number for dialed subscriber to MSC1. Once MSC knows the MSRN number, it they hear the routing information is get ended and then the signaling information is get sent to MSC2. Once MSC2 receives the MSRN number, it try to locate the particular mobile station 
via establishing the signaling information to that particular subscriber. Once this signaling information is get established, then this particular subscriber starts ringing. And this is how the call is get established and using the particularly localization procedure. Thank you very much. And here, uh, after that, this is this particularly flow is get summarized using a steps. In first step, Johnny dialed the MSISDN number of Janardhan. The nearest B BTS locates the BSC and signaling connection is get established between MSC and mobile station. MSC1 identifies the type of call, sends request to HLR. Fourth step, HLR locates the IMSI number. Fifth step, HLR, HLR sends a request to MSC2 to obtain the MSRN number. Sixth, MSC2 retrieves the MSRN pool for given IMSI number from its VLR database and sends it to HLR. HLR routes this particular MSRN number to MSC1. MSC1 now notes the location of MSC2. MSC2 then locates the location of subscriber 2 and then subscriber 2 starts ringing. This is how in GSM network the call is get established. Thank you very much.